Great. Thank you very much for that. <clears throat> OK, well, just to say um, that we're not starting from scratch today with the conversations, as, as Peter and Joanne have said, um, much has gone on before. Um, QQI were involved in a green paper on assessment and the National Forum um, had an enhancement theme around um, assessment. Um, so we've learned a lot already in relation to work-based assessment and today is really building on that work. Um, the, so, so maybe you could progress the slide there, Catherine. Um, <clears throat> so as Peter was saying, there has been a series of um, work-based assessment events um, this year alone that we sort of just started the conversation. And the aim of these events was to try and have conversations and discussions around some of the challenges and opportunities in work-based assessment. Very timely, given the COVID-19 situation, that we could really relook at the work-based assessment um, context and looking at what's happening in this space. So back in June, um, we had a webinar number one around the shared challenges and opportunities with over 120 people attended that <coughs> um, event in June. And we looked at shared challenges and opportunities. We then built into webinar number two, which was going deeper. And this allowed us to explore one particular challenge in particular, which happened to be consistency. Um, and that happened relatively recently on the 14th of October. And this led in some ways to the symposium today, which is around getting to grips with policies and practice. But in between, we also set up a work-based assessment learning community uh, where we encouraged discussions around the different issues to do with work-based assessment. So I'm just going to go through some of the things that we learned in relation to these. <clears throat> um, the first thing that we learned Sorry, could you go back one slide? Yeah, the first thing that we learned was that assessment has a broad meaning. So when we think about assessment, whether it's work-based or not, assessment definition has a broad meaning. And this work built on the national enhancement themes uh, work on assessment. And what we mean when we talk about assessment is that assessment... Uh, Jared, Jared. Geraldine, can I interrupt for a moment? Your, your microphone seems to be crackling a little bit. I wonder whether adjusting it might might help. Um, okay, sorry, Peter, I, I, I can't do anything about that. Sorry, Colin, unless you can help me with that one. Uh, Geraldine, your audio is coming through perfect here for me. Is it? Okay. Um, okay. Perfect for me too. Okay, all right. Okay, but thanks for that, Peter. Um, I'll, I'll continue if that's all right then. Um, so assessment has a broad meaning. This is the National Forum's definition of assessment and it's very appropriate for work-based assessment because it looks at assessment of learning, which is summative and that's the graded piece that's very high stakes for students. But it's not only that. Assessment also means assessment for learning and assessment as learning. And these are often called formative assessments. And these are really clear and, and really important in relation to assessment. And they include feedback. The purple there includes feedback for students so they know how well they're doing. So that can be feedback from um, the employers, from the, the higher education staff. But really, really important on the left there is assessment as learning. <clears throat> and that's where students learn to self-monitor and judge their own work. And in work-based assessment, this is really important as students are really central to learning what is, is um, knowing how well they are doing. Okay, the next thing we learned and building on that is that there's three key partners and there's more, as Joanne mentioned, in work-based assessment. And this was work that was done as part of the National Forum, again, enhancement theme. The student is the center at it. They are the most important person in this piece. Um, they need to know how well they're doing and they need to be part of the assessment. But on the right, you have work-based staff. And then on the left, you have higher education or further education staff. Three key um, partners in work-based assessment with the student at the center, really, really important in their empowerment in it and how they actually, how well they know they, they are doing through the assessment as learning. The next thing we learned, this was from webinar one, is that there are many different work contexts that people uh, are in. And there's much, uh, many different terminology around these work-based um, contexts. 
Um, and I know Nora will build on this work when she's giving her keynote. Uh, when we asked people in, in webinar one, we found out that there are many different contexts from applied research, apprenticeships, internships, traineeships, and other. Um, and when we explored what people meant by other, they talked about things like teaching practice, skills, workshops, programs of um, management skills. So there's much um, different language around this place. So we know that people are in many different contexts. Students are going to many different placements and that are called many different things. So we need to get, I suppose, a better understanding of the language around this. The next thing we learned in webinar one was that people had particular challenges. And again, we, we learned when we asked people, well, what are your challenges? Um, and 138 in, in this webinar said that in relation to assessment, which is that green circle in the middle, one of the things that came out a lot was consistency. How do we have consistent um, assessment? And that linked with standards and grading approaches. But they also mentioned feedback, authentic and relevant assessment, and student engagement. And in some ways, this has led to some of the topics that we have chosen for the, the seminar today. So there were things that came through, lots of many other things came through as challenges, but these particularly came through. Then when we said, well, let's have a webinar, particularly around consistency, because that's what people are looking for. And what do we learn, I suppose, from this particular webinar? Well, we learned that there's many different types of consistency. There's consistency between assessors, often called interrater reliability, consistency across contexts, consistency across tasks, and consistency over time. And again, we asked the participants in this webinar, uh, what were the particular challenges in relation to these um, consistency? And what they came through was, Assessors, consistency between assessors is the one that people are most challenged by. Um, you know, one assessor not, um, you know, um, giving the same sort of grades or same sort of feedback as another assessor. And the consistency across contexts is another one that was coming through. But tasks and times in the work based learning context were not as particularly a, a challenge. So in, when we explored consistency a little bit more in that webinar, we learned that standards and grades are really key to sort of things being consistent. They're sort of the core, if the standards are correct, they do have the consistency, really important. But work-based learning is like shifting sands. Um, unlike the kind of controlled environment that you have in the institution, work-based learning contexts are very mobile, maybe shifting like sands particularly the context change, the students on the left there are different and they're unique. The staff have different views on assessments and attitudes to assessment and the task and tools may differ. So some of the solutions that we came across were things like the grading approaches, the age old debate about pass fail or grading or how do you grade, importance of making moderation, importance of well-designed rubrics, staff training, is one of the solutions. The development of a community of practice for assessors, building some collaborative approaches, student self-monitoring so that they're involved in the process and enabling policies. And then finally, a concluding thought from this webinar, because we have more to learn in this space and more to learn today. And this is from one of our keynotes, Rola, so I wanted to, to quote, quote her. Uh, we did say that consistency is really important and it came up as, as I say, for, for people in the webinars, but work-based assessment design requires a compromise between contextualization and standardization. So the educational impact and validity of the assessment might not be worth sacrificing in the pursuit of reliability. So I think this is a, an important thought just might set us up for the day that there's a, a balance here to be found between validity of the assessment and the reliability and consistency. So I'll leave you with that thought. I will just put the references up there for, so it's recorded for anybody who would like them. Um, and I'll, I'll pass back to, to Peter there, okay?